Okay, so welcome back and on this one we need to talk about the blend, mixer, pan and stereo width modules. And you can find them all on the mix section right here. Okay, so let's just, you know, cover this. I have right here a default patch and every time I press a key, I get a sound, right? Alright, so let's start with the blend. I'm gonna go right here to the blend control and I'm just gonna bring it right here. Right, so we have two oscillators, maybe one oscillator, and I want to bring a new oscillator right here, just to, you know, just to make it a little bit better. And I'm going to bring it right here. So the blend, what it will do, it will take two signals, signals and it will combine them, but it will do it on a very particular way. So I'm going to connect this one right here, that one is going to be the A, and this one is going to be the B, and we want to go out of the blend and go out to uh, the envelope. Now what this one will do, it will combine the sources. Now, but you can decide how much of A, this one is the A and this one is the B, you're going to get. If you're right in the middle, you're doing 50% of this one and 50% of this one. So, but you're blending both sources. And this will, of course, you know, return or kind of a result into a very uh, different waveform because you're combining different sources. So if I output whatever it is that we are getting right here, notice how the waveform is just, you know, kind of a changing. And then again, remember that you're blending, right? So just a little bit different. Now, whenever you go to A, to the A side or to the B side, you're going to be doing more of the saw and a little bit less of the B, you know, a little bit more of the A and a little bit, a uh, little bit less of the, of the B. So if I maybe going to go and maybe turn this one into a sine wave, it's going to just look a little bit better. Notice that we get a combination of both. So if I go towards the saw, we're going to get more of the saw and less of the sine. And if I go all the other way, we're going to get more of the sine and less of the saw. That's how the blend works. Whenever you're 50%, you're doing, you know, half and half. And of course, this is going to change how it sounds. If I play something, we get a combination of both. Maybe we're going to go down in volume. We get a combination of both. But if I go towards the saw, towards this one, we get the saw. And all the other way, we're going to go to the sine wave. And this is very useful because maybe you just want a sine wave sound, but you want to, all, to add a little bit of grit. So maybe you just can bring a little bit of that saw and keep that sine wave. I notice how the, this looks. Right, so very simple control. So you can find the blend control on the polysynth, for example, which is a, a synthesizer that we get on Bitwick. So then you have the mixer and I'm going to go right there, go to mix. So the mix is going to be a little bit different and it's going to be way different. So the mixer doesn't care how much of A or how much of B you're doing. The mixer cares about volume and what you're feeding to the mixer. So again, it's just a mixer. It's like a channel mixer, right? And it, you will control the volume and other uh, you know parameters uh, to of whatever you feed right here. Now, in this case, I'm going to be changing the color of this one so we can see different colors. Now, I'm going to go and bring this one right here and we can see the color. And then as soon as we plug more things, this is just going to start growing and growing and growing. If I bring in a different oscillator, you can connect a lot of, uh, a lot of things right here to this mixer. And this will just mix whatever you're inputting right here. And then it will go out. And for now, I'm just going to delete this one. And then, of course, you're going to get your final sound. Now, if I connect this one right here, notice that the instruction is a little bit better, is a little bit different. And it's because this one cares about the volume and the gain that, you know, how much you're feeding to this. If I go less of this, we're going to get more of the sine wave because we are doing less, uh, you know, less volume of this one, less gain. Same thing with the other one. If we go less on this one and we go more on this one, we're just going to get more of the, of the A instead of the B. Again, this one cares about, uh, about the gain. Now, uh, at the same time, this one can control not, not just the volume, I'm going to go a little bit down in volume, this one can go and do a solo of whatever, uh, you know, you're connecting on this one. If I go to the other one, we are just going to get the sine wave. At the same time, you can mute. And of course, you can do some panning. So if I go to solo, maybe the sine wave, because it's just a little bit easier to hear. And uh, maybe I'm going to put it right here. We can do panning we just can pan it to the left and pan to the right right so very very simple you know very simple control so if you're talking about panning what you get is going to be the pan control for now i'm just going to enable both so we are kind of hearing both oscillators so the pan control can maybe connect it to whatever out that you're going right here 
and you can pan it all the way to the left or you can pan it all the way to the right right so very again very simple very simple control all right so in this case i'm gonna leave it at the center point right here just at the center and i'm going to maybe move this just a little bit right there and i'm gonna put it right here okay so very simple so then of course you have the stereo width now for this one you need to uh you need to have some you need you need to have some whiteness right here uh let's, i don't know if he's that that even you know I don't even know if that is even worked, uh, but I'm going to go and put it right here at the end of the chain. So this one will, of course, go right here. And maybe I'm going to disconnect this one because maybe we just don't need it. Maybe uh, just delete it. So if I play something, we are just pretty much getting the same thing we get without the, uh, you know, without this one. And if I go all the way to down, you know, 0%, I get the same. And if I go up... I'm getting exactly the same and it's because whatever you feed to this needs to be stereo if you're this is a mono right now we have no stereo going on and we can actually evaluate this with an imager so we can go to uh, the imager of ozone right so this is a free plugin that you can get from uh, isotope and this is at the end of the chain so if I play something this is going to tell me how wide it's something it's a vector scope right if I do something like this notice it's right at the center and it's because it's super mono now what can we do to make it stereo and for now notice that we are at 100 so this means that we are not doing anything with you know with this uh with right we are doing nothing so what we can do we can go right here and offset this oscillator and we can offset a little bit from you know the left from the right and now we are going to get stereo right and this is telling me how much of a stereo we are doing Maybe I'm going to go down in volume just a little bit. And there's a difference. We are doing a, uh, we are just making this white. Maybe I'm going to go right here to five, which is not a lot. And maybe I'm going to go right here to five. And again, I'm just going to offset the left and the right. And now we're going to get something super wide. Now this control can go all the way down and we are just going to make it mono again. And of course, since we are using two sources, it's going to sound a little bit phasey. But if you go to all the other way, you just can make it even wider if you wanted to. Now, of course, you need to use this module with care. If you make it something, you make something super wide, it might affect your mix. But maybe you want to use something that it's just going to be super wide and you uh, have no mono image or you don't care about the center. Well, you can use this, mo this module to make it super wide. All right, so let's try to build something with what we know and what we've just learned on the uh, on this uh, modules. Why not? So I'm going to go right here and just bring an oscillator. I'm going to bring a sign and just put it right there. All right. So very simple, very simple. I'm maybe going to bring a filter. Maybe I do want to do some filtering. So I'm going to put it right there. So if we have a low pass as cake and maybe I'm going to go down on this one. I'm going to do 24. I'm just going to be cutting a lot of high frequencies and doing a little bit of resonance. Right. Something very simple. A little bit of less of attack. And if we play this, we're going to get something really dull. Right. So maybe I want to bring some other things right here. And we can do a lot, we can create a lot of sound sounds just creating the same waveform. In this case, I'm just using a sine wave. But we uh, each oscillator on Bitwig has a lot of control, so we can just turn this into something else. Maybe I want to fold it. This is just going to give me just a different instruction. Maybe the sine wave, I'm going to do a little bit of the skew right here. And maybe I'm going to be changing this to something else. And maybe I'm going to make this one lower. And this one is going to be uh, higher, two to one. So this one is low, but of course we are folding, we're going to get much more harmonics. And now what do I want to do? I want to do a little bit of phase modulation. Now, if you remember, we cannot use different sources just connected to the same place. So we need something, you know, as soon as I connect the first one, it's just disconnected the second one. So we need something that, you know, can be uh, receiving, can receive uh, two signals at once and can output one. If you think about this, we have the blend or we even have the mixer. So what you can do, you just can bring the blend right here. And we know that this one will just provide an instruction that will be a blend of both. And depends on how much we go to the A or how much we go to the B. You're just going to get one or the other one, right? We know this now. 
If I go to the A, we get more of this. And if I go to the other one, we get more of the sine wave, which is a little bit just, you know, kind of an offset right here. So I'm going to remove this one right there. And I'm just going to maybe put it right here and change the color because this one is related to this one. So now if I go to the blend, I can do a little bit of face modulation. I'm going to put it right there. Just go up in the, in the, you know, in the attenuator. Now if I play something, you know, we get something a little bit, bit better. We get a, much more harmonics and I'm doing a lot of cutting. If I go up, we are going to get much more. Now on the blend, we are just not doing anything. We are just doing modulation with the sign. Full, it's going to be a full to this one. Now if I start playing the blend, we are just start getting, you know, different sounds because I'm blending and then I'm getting more of the sign for the second one of this one. So, you know, if I maybe leave it right here, still it's just going to sound... It's just it's still, you know, going to sound a little bit dull. So maybe what we can do, we can bring a little bit of uh, what we've learned so far on this series, which is going to be maybe the steps. So uh, maybe I can, uh, I'm going to go all the way down and I'm going to use this instruction to modulate the blend. And I'm going to do something like that. I'm going to select this device, uh, this device right here. And what I want to do, I'm going to do manually 1.0. That's what I want to do. I'm going to start all the way down and the steps are going to go up and down, up and down. So now we need to provide some kind of instruction right here. Maybe I'm going to need to listen to what's going on right here. And we can create some kind of a pattern. Right? That's the idea. Right. So maybe I'm going to keep it right there. So that sounds cool. Notice that what, how um, you know very, we are doing very little. Maybe, maybe I made a mistake right there. Let me just uh, go out of here. Let's go a little bit down in volume. We are doing just very little, and it sounds cool, right? Now, of course, we can do more. Let's say that we want to offset whatever it is that we are doing right here and just change how it moves. So we know that we can go and bring the face in and then maybe go to face and use a... Maybe we, we can even use a facer or maybe use the scaler to change how this one is going to move. Now, of course, we can do this, but you have kind of a, a different way of doing this, which is if you go to LFO, you have the transport. If I hover this right there, it's going to say synced face signal generator. Now, if I maybe uh, put it right here, and we never used this one before, uh, if I connect it, notice it's just going to look way similar to what the face uh, device face it's doing. And right here, you can offset it, we can change the timings right here. It's just going to change how it works, right? And we can even offset it if we wanted to. So we can use this uh, just to do something to whatever we want right here. And maybe right here, I'm going to go to 4 and do something maybe 4, 8. Why not? Uh, I'm going to go over there, just do 4, 8. I'm not going to go offset. And I'm just going to connect it right here. And notice that this is just going to change how this behaves. Just going faster. If I disconnect it and bring the face in, it's just much slower, right? Right. I'm going to disconnect this one. Right, so that, I kind of like that one. Okay, so what I want to do, I want to just make it a little bit better because right now, again, it sounds fine, but we can do a little bit more. So what we can do, we can bring a mixer because I'm getting a sound from this one, but I like how this one sounds. You know, we have a lot of harm harm uh, harmonics and it sounds low. So maybe we can use the lows of this one. Why not? I'm going to go move this one right here and we can just bring a mixer. And we know that with the mixer, we just can blend different sounds right here. So maybe this one is going to be the oscillator number one, which is going to be, I don't know, this one. And this one, it's going to go instead of uh, right here, it's just going to go to the second one. And maybe I'm going to need to do something like that and something like that. And now from here, we can go out to the filter and then just go out on the chain. Now, of course, this one, it's very low. It's super low. So since these ones are lows, maybe I just can go and do something like that and just get a little bit less from the lows, right? And on this one, we're going to keep the highs. 
So I also want a little bit of stereo width. Why not? So what I can do, I can go right here, do plus, uh, plus and minus, and offset it from left to right. Just like that. Maybe I'm gonna go and do something like that. Now remember that we can just control a little bit better the, uh, of course, the stereo width of something. And for now, I'm just gonna connect this here, and I'm just gonna go right there. So now if we want if we want to go less, we can control it with this control and just make things easier for us. Right? Very simple. Now what I want to do, I just want to do something, um, you know, maybe a little bit better. Every time, notice that uh, this is just going on a stride forward fashion way, just going and never stopping. So maybe we can bring the reset and just connect it right here. And every time I play something, this one is gonna restart. Right, let me do a little bit less of a release. Right, super cool. Now I want to do a little bit more because you know, we can. Now I'm gonna go maybe to the oscillator and I'm just gonna bring a wavetable oscillator, right? And I'm gonna maybe go and select a waveform from here. Okay, so I'm gonna be using this one. It's gonna be square sync plus one. This is uh, one of the wavetables that you get built in uh, uh, within Bitwig. So what I want to do, maybe I just want to do a little bit of, uh, you know, of something else because we can do it with the wavetable. So I want to go through the mixer. So this is going to go right there and maybe I'm going to need to maybe move this down for just right now and I'm going to just leave it right there. So now we're going to get this one and I'm going to make this one yellow just to change the color. So this is going to be the wavetable. Now, of course, when we start moving the wavetable, we are just gonna start getting different sounds. So maybe I want to do, I want to use this to our benefit, but I also maybe want to do something different. I'm gonna disconnect the keyboard right here. So if I play a key, the wavetable is just gonna sound the same every single time. So I'm gonna bring an LFO just right here and just connect this LFO to whatever output we have right here. Now I'm gonna change it to maybe something like that, maybe a square. And now every time that we play something, this one is going to control whatever pitch is going on. So I can go 12 semitones up and by doing triple click, you can just do 12 and you're gonna go from zero to 12. So now we have that. So if I press a low a C, which is the same, it's just gonna give me C and then C one octave higher, right? So super cool and of course, this one will not listen to the keyboard because we are just disabling the keyboard. So remember, if you're doing uh, maybe something, you're playing something on the key of C, you're going to need to kind of offset this to whatever key that you want to press, to, to play. So, okay, so this one is going to go from zero, from the uh, this uh, one octave, the, the C octave, one octave up. Pretty simple. All right, so if we I unsolo this one, and I'm gonna move this module right here because this belongs to this one. If I play everything at the same time, it's gonna be a little bit loud. And we get something cooler, right? Sounds cool, sounds fun. Of course, it's a little bit loud, so maybe we can do, go down on the volume. Now, what I would, love to, uh, I would love to do is just mess with this one, the wavetable, a little bit, because everything sounds very, very at the center. It's just kind of everything at the center. The subs, this one, this one is, of course, we have stereo width, but still, we have a lot of, a lot of uh, going on right here on the sound. What I would, I would love to do is I would love to go to mix and do a little bit of panning right here. So if I go and do solo, I can go all the way to the left and I can go all the way to the right. But maybe I want to add a little bit of modulation right here. Now what I want to do, I want to use the same LFO that we are using. Now the thing is that this one, it's, uh, it's going to be a bipolar, right? So what I can do as well, I can do a little bit of index since we can, and this is just gonna make it sound cooler. So I'm gonna go right there into solo. Right? Okay, so I'm gonna keep it right there, just gonna like that. But I what I really want to do, I want to LFO the pan going from left to right. So if I go right this, this is just not gonna work. Because the LFO, this LFO, is not bipolar, right? It's just going from the center and then up. But what I want to go, I want to do, I want to go from left to right. That's what I want to do. Now what we can do, we can still use this LFO and we can use some other modules that we have available 
just to get the same behavior we want. So I can go to the level and just get the same, get what I want without bringing a different LFO. Because if I change this one, it's gonna change how the index works and how this is gonna work. Notice that now it's just going all the way down and all the way up, and it's not what I want. I want to keep the center and then up. So we can go right here and grab whatever it is that the LFO is doing, which of course we can see, we can always see what this is doing. And just so you know, so you can, because we are learning and we have time, why not? I'm gonna go right here and notice this one is going from zero and up, right? It's just a square. As soon as I do this, it's gonna go from minus one to plus one, going of course through zero. And this is of course affecting the pitch that we are doing right here. But I want to, I want that, for the pan. So, okay, so what we can do, we can go to level and we have some tools, some nice tools that we can use. Right here, for example, you have the buy to uni and the uni to buy. Right to buy. Right now, the LFO is going to be unipolar, right? It's go for, goes from zero and up to one. It's unipolar. So what I want to do, I want to change it from unipolar to bipolar. Go from that, whatever he's doing, and go from minus one to plus one. So you need to choose what you want to do right here. So we want to go from uni to buy. So I can just bring this one right here. Maybe I'm going to put it right there and just connect it to this out. At the same time, of course, we want to do some modulation. So I'm going to remove the modulation we have right here. And I'm going to go to uh, input and output and just bring the modulator out. And now this modulation is going to be, and I'm going to bring this oscilloscope, and sometimes I just remove elements and then bring them back because I'm kind of a, I'm kind of a building this on the go. Uh, sometimes I don't know where I'm going. Uh, I'm gonna go slow, and now we can see that this one is going up and down the way we want. So okay, so I'm gonna grab this modulator and we are gonna do just that. So now we get what we want. We are going from left and right, and we get that panning from left to right. And I kind of like that. But the thing is, it's just maybe too aggressive. If I do play... Right? So it sounds cool, but maybe it's just a little bit too aggressive. So what you can do, you can go maybe to level, and you can smooth whatever instruction that you're providing right here. Now this one behaves like a square. It's like an on and off, all the way in and all the way, uh, all the way on and all the way off. All the way to the left, all the way to the right. So what you can do, you can maybe bring a lag. And the lag, what will do, it will smooth whatever it is that you're doing. So notice that now it's not that harsh. It's just a little bit more smooth. And if I keep going up, notice that now it's just going to move smoothly. And if I press something, we can hear that it's just moving all the way from the left to the right, back and forward. And if I go all the way up, the lag is just going to make it super laggy. So that's just not going to give us the effect we want. So we need to go and find a sweet spot where we have something that we can use and it's still, you know, doing that effect. I believe right there maybe it's just fine. Alright, so fine, right? Okay, of course this is a little bit too loud. Maybe I'm going to go down on the volume of this one. Right, if you... Okay, so if I play something... And I'm playing C, then I'm playing a different key, but everything everything is around C, it's a C minor. Now, why am I playing C minor? Because remember that this LFO is playing with the wavetable pitch. It's going from C to a higher C. That's why I'm keeping on C. If I play something else, it's still gonna sound cool, but it just sounds, you know, a little bit weird with this with this control. But now, if I play a C, I make sure, make sure that everything is kind of a, you know, on the same scale. So this sounds cool to me. Now, what we can do, maybe we can bring a little bit of effects. And I'm going to do the usual stuff. I'm just going to bring the delay like that. And I'm not going to do anything. Maybe going to bring the delay right here and just the reverb. And I'm not going to touch. Because remember, if you have something that sounds cool right here, this, uh, the effects will just enhance whatever you have. But if this sounds like crap, it doesn't matter how much effects you're going to put it. It's still going to sound like crap. Sound like crap. So now we get that. And I'm notice I'm using a default patch, like always. I'm not changing anything. I 
like this, you know? Of course, we can mess with the filter. Alright. And that's the patch. Okay, so hopefully you learned something from this one. Remember, of course, to like and subscribe. And if you have the money and you would like to buy me a coffee, you can go to Patreon and you are going to get some, uh, you know, sample packs. Uh, in, not sample packs, so preset packs in return, of course. And you can, you know, buy me a coffee and support the channel. And of course, leave a comment. I'm keep I'm going to keep doing this if you watch these videos, if you like uh, these videos and you find them useful, right? If you like these guides. If no one's watching, why even doing this? So remember to like, subscribe and leave a comment and see you on the next one. And on the next one, we will talk about add, subtract, divide and multiply. What we have right here, the add, divide, multiply and subtract.